depends. So rule number one. Rule number one, if the powers top and bottom are equal, divide coefficients. What I mean by that, if you look in problem number two, I see that the largest power in the numerator is an x to the fourth. I see the largest power in the denominator is x to the fourth. Those two powers are the same. Don't forget that there is a coefficient of a one in front of that x fourth, even though we don't write it down. That means that the <coughs> limit is three, because three divided by one is three. The negative five, insignificant, we don't care. End of story. So I like to say, if the powers are the same, divide. In number three, what we notice is that the powers top and bottom are not the same. The biggest thing on the top is an x to the first power. Biggest thing on the bottom is x squared. Since the x squared, as you go to infinity, either positive or negative, grows so much more than an x does, what that tells me is that I'm going to have some kind of smaller number on the top and some kind of bigger number on the bottom. Like, for example, 1 divided by a million. That number is really close to zero. zero. So whenever you have a small power over a big power, the answer is always going to be zero. That's rule number two. Small over big powers give you a limit of zero. Again, these rules only work when you're going to infinity for the x's. Number four, I notice that I have the same thing as rule number one was. Or in other words, x squared over x squared, those are the same powers. So what do I do when the powers are the same? Divide the coefficients. The coefficients are each one, so my answer is one. This was pertaining to rule number one. One x squared divided by one x squared is one. Rule number three. In rule number three, what I notice is that as I look at the biggest thing on the top, which is x cubed, and the biggest thing on the bottom, and the only thing on the bottom, which is x squared, the power in the numerator is bigger. Or in other words, as I go out to infinity, I'm going to get some big number on the top and some small number on the bottom. Like, for example, 1 billion divided by 3. And as I get bigger and bigger on the top, and relative smaller and smaller on the bottom, I go to infinity. infinity. So rule number three is that if you have some big power on the top and some smaller power on the bottom, you're going to go to some kind of infinity. Now this could be a positive or a negative infinity, so you need to be careful. Check the signs. For example, if in this particular example I was going to negative <coughs> infinity, Let's just make one up like that. Let's say that I said I want the limit as x was approaching negative infinity of x cubed over x squared. What ends up happening, just for the sake of argument, even though infinity is not a number, I would have negative infinity cubed over negative infinity squared. The number on the top is negative. The number on the bottom is positive. But we know that since we're going big divided by small, it's a negative divided by a negative, or by a positive, excuse me, this would yield a negative infinity. So the only thing that's different in our last slide is that they use n's. That's it. So there's nothing really to worry about there. 
as I look at these problems, in letter A, I notice in the numerator, I see a 3n in the denominator. I see an n squared. This rule is it's going to be 0 in the end. It's small over big. There's a small power on the top, big on the bottom. The answer is going to be a 0. In the part B, I see a 3n squared on the top. It's the only thing. The n squared is the biggest thing in the denominator. What do you notice about the powers? They're the same. So the rule is, if they are the same, I divide. So it's equal to 3 divided by 1, or in other words, 3. So the limit's 3. In the very last problem, they try to disguise things. So here's what I want to tell you. As you look at the numerator, here's what I see going on. I see an n squared, which is the largest thing on the outside of that parenthesis. <coughs> I see this particular n here also being squared. And then I see the 6 that's being multiplied by it. If I were to multiply the 6 times the n squared times the n being squared, the biggest thing that would occur in the numerator would be 6n to the 4th. Now, I could foil out this stuff on the top. But what you'll discover when you foil it all out, which I'll show you in a moment, is that the biggest thing on the top is 6n4. On the bottom, I see an n to the 4th times 4, which is 4n4. And if I simplify this, my answer, since the powers are the same, is going to be 3 halves. So now let me show you how that actually works out if I was doing the algebra first. So let's say I'm rewriting this out, the limit as n goes to infinity. On the top, I would have 6 times n squared times the parentheses n squared plus 2n plus 1 when I foil out the stuff that was on the inside. So this stuff right here foiled out is this stuff right here. On the bottom, I would have 4 times n to the 4th. And if I simplified that, I would see the limit as my n was approaching infinity. And on the top, I would have 6n4 plus 12. Can't write, I'm sorry. 12n3 plus 6n squared. And on the bottom, I have 4n4. And again, you're only worried about the biggest thing on the top and the biggest thing on the bottom. So you can foil it all out, or you can just pay attention to the biggest powers and take care of those. So rule number one, if the exponents are the same, you just divide the coefficients. Rule number two, big on bottom, you're going to zero. Rule number three, big on top, you're going to some kind of an infinity.